So Wolf Quest started with a fish. We'd uh, been working with the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago on a couple online interactives and games, and one was called Build a Fish, where you design a fish, choose adaptations, and then swim around on the reef and try to survive, uh, eat, and avoid being eaten. And as we were finishing that up, we thought this would be really fun as a multiplayer game, a competitive multiplayer game on the reef there. Um, of course, we didn't have the budget or the scope to make that happen, but it got me thinking about um, animal games and uh, multiplayer and social experiences, and I thought, well, humans are social animals, so what's another social animal? Uh, well, a wolf. Um, and wolves are also charismatic megafauna, so that helps. Um, and so I began to develop this idea. I even came up with a name for it, iWolf. Um, so I noodled around with this for a couple years, pitched it to a couple of zoos, um, wasn't really right for anybody at that time. And then we did a project with the Minnesota Zoo called uh, Zoo Matchmaker about tiger genetics. Uh, I think we all enjoyed that experience. I think we liked what we came up with. So uh, Grant Spickelmeyer, the zoo said, uh, got any other ideas? Um, and I said, well, actually. For the Minnesota Zoo, it was the, the perfect fit because wolves are such an iconic part of Minnesota. Um, the Minnesota was the only state in the lower 48 that kept uh, wolves the entire time when they were going extinct elsewhere. Uh, they were still alive in uh, Minnesota. They were also part of a, a huge scientific experiment with the reintroduction of wolves into Yellowstone National Park. And so it was a, actually a really exciting recovery story of not just an animal that's in danger of extinction, but an animal that's actively coming back. So it seemed worth submitting a proposal, at least, to the National Science Foundation. Um, it's a government agency. They fund uh, a lot of scientific research around the country, but they also fund some science education. NOVA television show episodes, IMAX movies, traveling science museum exhibits. So. Why not a computer game, right? It seemed like a unique enough idea. I mean, for a National Science Foundation grant, you kind of have to be kind of in innovative and transformative. We received the National Science Foundation grant on our first application submission, which was uh, very exciting and a little scary. <laughs> like, now we got to do it, right? WolfQuest has the pretty amazing distinction of being the first fully realized 3D first person video game to be funded as a National Science Foundation informal science education project. So one thing you've got to have in an NSF grant are science advisors. Um, and so we were really lucky to get some of the top wolf advisors in the country with Dr. Dave Meach, Dr. Dan McNulty, um, International Wolf Center. Uh, up in Ely, Minnesota, they just really uh, loved this project from the very beginning. We were gonna hopefully provide some behavioral uh, information about how wolves might react in certain circumstances. Another great thing about uh, the NSF grant was we got to hire a project coordinator to do huge amounts of work just managing and coordinating all the different threads of the project. Um, so we hired Michelle um, fairly soon after getting the grant. I just remember my first day on the job. First of all, I was like, how did I get this job working at the zoo on a video game? How did this happen? My husband was delighted because he thought this was like a dream come true. And then later, once things were going full tilt, uh, Canna took over the job. Between the game and the forum and how excited everyone was with everything about it, it was, it was an interesting thing to step into. The original plan was to use Shockwave 3D, which in 2005 was really the main way to put 3D interactive content on the web. But we very quickly discovered that Shockwave really wasn't up to the visual production values that we were trying to produce. So we looked around and uh, Torque was the main 3D uh, game authoring tool for indie game developers. So we looked at that, but uh, it had a very steep learning curve. The interface was very primitive for actually managing and connecting all of the components. You had to write all your own things like shaders, which are the, the pieces of code that tell the game how to draw the models on the screen. It was, it was really primitive. So Unity was the new kid on the block at the time for game development, um, but they were really growing fast. And so we took a close look at them. A full end-to-end -end game authoring tool. And decided that this really seemed like the best fit for our abilities and our goals. And that was a big risk. Um, I, maybe I'll take a little bit of credit for that too, because I think I had some funders who were not happy about that, that I, I convinced to let Dave switch to the Unity system. So that was a very consequential decision, uh, choosing Unity. I think if we'd stuck with Shockwave or switched to Torque, um, 
not have finished the game, gotten something out there, but it would have been a dead end. Um, technically, we would have invested all that effort into something which um, basically um, within a year or a couple of years went defunct. So designing the Wolf Quest game uh, was challenging. Um, we wanted, from the very beginning, we knew we wanted it to be factually accurate. Uh, that was important. We had so many questions for our advisors. What would happen in this situation, in that situation? What would happen if a wolf did this? What would happen if a wolf did that? How would they look while they're hunting? What would the choices that they would make, whether they were tracking or when they encounter a stranger within their territory? We had to extract uh, all these rules of, of real wolf behavior um, and put them into the game. You can never predict what a wolf's going to do. That's the hardest challenge about this project is, you know, it depends on attitude, it depends on rank, it depends upon temperature. Behavior, ecology, natural history, biology, and turning that into rules that the computer could follow and embody in a, in a, in a natural way. The rules of wolf behavior, the rules of the biology, are the same rules that the player has to learn to to play the game and to be successful. But we had a lot of discussions, you know, a lot of discussions about how do you make something like the hunt uh, challenging enough that you get a real sense of how hard it is for a wolf to bring down prey. I mean, it's very, very hard. Wolves can spend hours and hours and hours uh, chasing down an elk. Video game player, if you're unsuccessful nine out of 10 times, you're probably closing up the video game and going to something else. Now you're playing as a wolf, but of course, you're still a human. Um, and so you're going to do things that uh, a wolf wouldn't do. Um, you would approach a, a human in the game uh, if you could, and a wolf, uh, North American wolf, would not do that. Um, and you do things that, uh, as even as a human in the real world, you wouldn't do, like go fight a grizzly bear. In real life, uh, wolves tend to run away from grizzly bears. Um, of course, that's part of the fun of games, is doing things that you wouldn't do in the real world. Our wolf experts, that was the only thing they, they kind of advised is, they're, they were okay with human, humans making the wolves do things wolves wouldn't normally do, as long as natural consequences would happen. Like if you keep picking on the bear, he's eventually gonna kick your butt. So our goal with the project was to show wolves as they really were, um, that they're not the bloodthirsty killers. Oh, wolves are bloodthirsty killers, they kill everything that moves. Of course, we also knew that people love wolves. Um, I mean, they love wolves. We had people, a lot of people, who had an overly kind of rose-colored glasses view. We didn't really think through what that meant um, in terms of their views toward the wolves and towards um, wolves in the game. Um, and didn't like to hear about the messier stuff, the fact that they actually do kill. Wolves go out and kill things, and they eat things, and there is blood, and there is guts. Violence is just part of a, a wolf's life. We had discussions about, you know, this is a kid's game. So how realistic do we want this to be with the killing of things? We made very careful choices about how the elk carcass gets eaten and what it looks like in the stages of being eaten and what kinds of sounds you hear when you're biting and being kicked. And... Uh, I'd say once or twice a week I would get a reaction from somebody about all the gore in the game. Uh, and wasn't I concerned because there would be young kids playing this game and, uh, and it was really bloody. Because animals were supposed to live harmoniously in nature and it was kind of scary and yucky to see animals doing what they do. So one person wrote us, the idea of watching my wolf attack prey brutally puts me off. The idea of uncontrolled raw animal desires may incite violent tendencies in children. And they thought, oh, well, but for a kid, couldn't you just, like, once they kill the elk, just have it, like, disappear? You know, and then their health bar goes up or something like that. Someone else wrote, the quest could be where the wolves set up a habitat for their community. They forage for food. But I don't think the point of the game is the kill. And, and we had to have a conversation about, no, the idea of this game, again, is to try to promote a real view of this wolf. We were writing the, the blog really mostly for ourselves, just to think through these, these design questions. Narrate our process of developing this game, the idea of a, um, a wildlife simulation role-playing game was a pretty new one and we wanted to document it. But somebody found it and we, we tracked this back. Um, somebody posted a link to it on the My Little Pony discussion forum. Um, and that just started people coming in. 
well, all of a sudden we were getting that comment section just filled with um, mostly teenagers and younger uh, kids who were interested in the game and wanted to know when it was going to come out and then had all sorts of ideas for what should be in the game. I remember when we had requests for the wolves to be able to wear jewelry, oh, yeah. necklaces. Can we, yeah, can we get it so that our wolves can wear jewelry? So here's a couple comments from the developer's blog. My sister made a necklace for my dog and my dog really did not mind it. Or have a little bit of purple fur or something like that. There can be a disclaimer that could say, a wolf wouldn't have a necklace in the wild. And we kept having to say, sorry, that's not what this is. We had 346 comments on that one blog post. I just, I'd never, I'd never thought about a wolf wearing a necklace before. So. That was the crazy thing about it. We always knew we wanted a community. We always knew we wanted to form a community around the game. Um, we didn't realize the community would form before the game was released. And then we started the forum um, just to kind of have a place to keep generating interest because there were comments on blog entries and there were emails coming in. And it just shot like gangbusters. It just kind of exploded. I remember watching the number of members that were joining just like just grow. I wish I would have had a graph of it. I actually made a graph um, and look at that, boom. And remember, this was before Facebook, before Twitter. Discussion forums were what you had for social media back then. I just remember just being blown away at the number of people that were registering for the forum. We were naive about the forum. Um, I think we thought this will be fun. It'll be a nice little place for people to come and talk about wolves and the game and nature. I mean, I, I obviously had a bunch of pitfalls that came about early on, not thinking about the popularity of the forum and um, the popularity of the, of the game and the idea of the game in certain circles. Well, a couple weeks after we launched the forum, we got hit by some trolls. My husband said, I remember that night that I came downstairs and you just said, leave me alone. I need to shut down the form and take care of some things. And I told him just not come in because I did not want him to see these inappropriate images. I can remember seeing things that night that I cannot unsee to this day. And it was, it was stressful, that idea that I could shut it down, but then cleaning up a mess that somebody had left behind. And I was on vacation. Steve and Michelle cleaned it all up. So I actually never saw any of that. But I realized, we realized that this was turning into something bigger than we expected. We need, I needed help. She came up with the idea of uh, appointing volunteer moderators, uh, which was a brilliant idea because... Because I couldn't do it all. It had gotten too many posts, too many people, too many sub forums, too much stuff going on. She said, Grant, I can't be on the forums 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, but there was action on there seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We were getting 900 posts a day on the forum. 900 a day. As a full-time job, I could not keep up with all the posts. And so the idea of, of taking some interested volunteer moderators. You just had to find people we could rely on. And for the most part, we did that. We had a lot of people volunteer their time and spend way more time than I thought they would ever devote to something. Yeah, I was really impressed with how they came through. And, and if they didn't, then we moved on and found people who were willing to put in the time and effort. So we were very proud of all these pieces we had. We had our trees, we had our wolves, we had some mountains. And so we put together this little demo reel of a video. It really wasn't a promo video we'd Wolf made West for um, users of the game, uh, of the game. And, but it got picked up by people who were intrigued by this crazy idea for a wolf video game. The video turned up on a cable TV show called uh, Attack of the Show about video games and they ridiculed it mercilessly. Crazy game that lets you pee as a wolf. At least, that's what people told me. I actually never watched the video. I just was feeling a little fragile. A lot of the folks who were, who were making fun of it had younger brothers and sisters who thought the idea of a wolf video game sounded a lot of fun. I smell elk! <laughs> So it's great to have an audience, a big, eager audience, but it does put some pressure on.
we really were in some ways the victims of our own success. We had set very high levels of expectations for ourselves and for what we were promising our players. And, and I remember when I saw it, I was so thrilled that there was a video game about wolves. As a nine-year-old, I was extremely excited and I remember anticipating first the demo and then the full release for a long time. It was, uh, it was one of the biggest things for me back then. I hope it measures up to what their expectations were because they all loved wolves and they loved video games. Everything just plain took a long time. And admittedly, some of that was our learning curve. We had never worked in 3D before. Because a lot of the things we'd done before were 2D or kind of, you know, 3D, quasi. Um, but it's very easy in a real-time 3D game to break that verisimilitude, um, to break the, the believability of something just weird happens out there. Um, and we had a lot of weird things happening with bugs. The interface, the programming of the characters, the animation control, the landscape, the weather. So many different components, so many different pieces, and they all had to work uh, in their own little system, but they also all had to connect um, together to create this larger game system um, that was believable and realistic and fun. Um, music. I just never even thought about music. I remember listening to music tracks and being like, does this sound like a hunt? Does this sound like a wolf just casually walking across the Mar Valley um, and thinking, how do I know? <laughs> how do I know what this should sound like? We needed something a little, a little mean, a little tough. Wolves are tough. I think my, I asked my brother to come over. I said, hey, I need some help. I need a bass. I need a second opinion. And I think it was, as we were just, again, noodling around, trying different stuff, he went. And I'm like, okay, that's cool, do that again. And Wolf Quest music really, I think, captures that excitement and drama of hunting. So we added a big boom, doom, doom, da doom, doom, boom, a big low drum right there, which added a lot to it. The music made the game better than it really was. December 21st, that was the launch date. We put it out there and uh, we tried to stick to it. And the server crashed. We had a relatively cheap web hosting package and they shut us down. One day into the release, they shut us down. Too much traffic. I was at Giants Ridge Ski Resort. Um, in the room trying to manage things on the forum as people are freaking out about the fact that they can't download things or they don't know what's going on. I remember being on the phone at midnight with uh, the web host and our web developer Clayton trying to migrate the whole site over, get everything hooked up and running again um, so we could make it live again. Again, remember just thinking, what have we gotten ourselves into? So, yeah. Much to our chagrin and scrambling, found some critical bugs uh, in the networking part for the multiplayer that meant that we had to pull it and rebuild it very quickly. And uh, kind of relaunch it. Um, so we were, we were learning along the way and I, I actually give a lot of credit to our, our fans for sticking with us during that time. We relaunched the game on January 2nd, 2008. That's still the biggest single day uh, ever on the WolfQuest forum. Um, but it just kept growing from there. It was really incredible how very quickly and certainly over time we developed a very loyal international following. We did expand the game a bit. We improved the Mate AI, we added some tutorials, um, and of course the Grizzly Bear was the big thing uh, we added with uh, Wolf Quest 1.5, Amethyst Mountain Deluxe. So to have Grizzly Bears that could show up and then challenge you at a carcass or fight you for food or uh, that you could run into was an absolute game changer. It was a totally new dynamic, something we'd never seen before. And I remember being super duper excited about that. But um, we were out of money, out of the budget for game development. We could keep Michelle on the forum going um, for quite some time. But uh, that was, at the time, that seemed like the end of the road for the actual game itself. That was really the, uh, the first of uh, uh, several near-death experiences that Wolf Quest has had. And fortunately, it was 
only a near-death experience. Um, but what happened next is another chapter in the story of WolfQuest. Thank you.